multiple arrests at the Coda Access Pipeline protest site. Officials plan to enter a closed Standing Rock camp site near the Dakota Access Pipeline early Thursday following the arrest of 10 people after a deadline to leave the area expired. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum said the remaining 25 to 50 or protesters holding out in the Ossidy Sakowin camp site will be allowed to leave without being arrested so contractors can continue cleaning up the protest site near the controversial 1,172-mile-long 1 pipeline. Those who refuse to leave will be arrested. You know that our big ask for tomorrow is anyone remaining in the camp. We want to make sure that they know they have an opportunity to voluntarily leave, Burgum said. Take your belongings, remove anything that may be culturally significant and we'll help you get on your way if you need to do that. The ten people who were arrested on the highway Wednesday outside the camp near Cannonball, North Dakota, had refused commands to leave the area, officials said. Authorities then closed the camp and did not allow vehicles to enter. The arrests came at the end of a day without any major conflict after police did not enter the camp. About 100 protesters voluntarily left before the 2 p.m. state deadline set by Bergen. Protesters chanted, waved flags and played drums as they left. At one point on Wednesday, a handful of tents were set ablaze. Tribal member Kuplis and Imkla Thunder and Lightning said some of the tents were frozen into the ground and had to be burned to be removed. Other tribal members said the fires are part of a tribal tradition. Burgum said a 17-year-old girl suffered severe burns and a 7-year-old boy was injured from either an explosion or an out-of-control blaze in the camp. Burgum said officials will enter the camp side Thursday around 9 a.m. CT. 10 a.m. ET. Anybody that's there is trespassing, so anybody that's there is breaking the law, he said. Anyone who obstructs our ability to do cleanup will be subject to arrest. North Dakota Highway Patrol spokesman Lt. Tom Iverson said authorities had given a group of protesters who agreed to be arrested an additional two hours to leave on Wednesday but that group never materialized. He said law enforcement were then confronted by agitators who approached the law enforcement line provoking them. Iverson said authorities were patient and gave people multiple warnings to back up and leave the roadway outside the camp entrance. Some people backed off, he said. We knew this day was going to come, Iverson said, referring to the state's deadline to close the camp for environmental and safety reasons. Last week. Burgum signed the emergency evacuation order of the property to allow private contractors to remove waste from the Ossidy Sakowin camp area, which officials say is in a floodplain. The order said warm temperatures have accelerated snowmelt and increased the risk of flooding, and that those in the floodplain are at risk of personal danger. Burgum's order came as the project moved closer to completion after the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers recently granted an easement for the last stretch of the pipeline bitterly opposed by Native Americans and environmentalists. Ossidy Sakowin was the main camp closest to where the pipeline will go underneath the Missouri River. At the peak of protests, the camp's population climbed to as many as 10,000 people.